Deep from the depths of the Balkan, one of the world's most notorious crime organizations arose. This is not your regular criminal organization who shoots, smuggles, and kills. This group is of a totally different order. They operate without violence, yet always seem to get their way. How come? They plan each and every step into detail and are always two steps ahead of everybody. They steal from the super rich and therefore seem to be more applauded than any other crime group in the world. It isn't always all rosy though. Mistakes are made and they are more than costly. One question lingers. Who is behind all these grand heists all over the world? This is the story of the Pink Panther Gang. The Pink Panther Gang are not regular thieves. They're truly skilled. Many of them used to be soldiers from Serbia, Montenegro, and the places that once made up Yugoslavia. They got their skills during the tough times of the Bosnian War, and now they use them to commit big robberies. The 90s were a hard time in the Balkans. Yugoslavia broke apart, leading to wars that hit places like Serbia, Montenegro, and Bosnia and Herzegovina really hard. Everywhere you looked, things were bad. These hard times led to a rise in crime, and as things got worse, the crime world looked like a way out. It offered a chance to get some power and money. This is where the Pink Panther Gang comes in. The group's start is traced back all the way to the early 1990s, when a Serbian man named Dragan Mikic started forming a group together with others. Many of these men were soldiers who went through a lot during their wars in Yugoslavia. For some, their crimes are not just about money, but are also about showing their anger. Some are upset with the European Union for not helping more during the Balkan Wars or because of bad memories from those times. The Pink Panthers became a notorious group of thieves, known for their swift, well-executed heists. Their operations are characterized by meticulous planning, speed, and sometimes charm. They often incorporate attractive women into their schemes, both for surveillance and during the thefts. While they possess weapons, they primarily use them for intimidation rather than harm. Over the years, they've employed various tactics, from painting public benches to deter people, wearing unique disguises, and even dressing as the opposite gender to blend in. Their operations are not just about stealing, they involve intricate planning. They secure funding from investors to finance their heists. They rent multiple apartments, one for planning, another as a decoy, and a third to stash the stolen goods, which is known only to the top members for security reasons. Members also stole cars for their operations to avoid any traceable records and use legitimate passports to cross borders undetected. The Pink Panthers operate differently from typical crime groups. Instead of a single leader, they function in small independent teams called cells. Interpol estimates that they have around 800 main members, with 60 core members spreading globally. It is said that the gang has no beginning, middle or ending. This decentralized structure makes them challenging to apprehend. Even if some members are caught, others continue their operations seamlessly. Let's get into the actual heists that are linked to the Pink Panther Gang. They have been stealing actively since the 1990s, but these are some of their most notable heists. One notable heist was the one in Las Vegas where they took the Millennium Necklace valued at $1 million on the 5th of December 2002. A man entered a luxury jewel store in the Venetian's Grand Canal shops. He engaged a sales lady about an exterior display, subtly guiding her outside. Soon after, three more men entered in quick succession. While two of them distracted the staff, the other man discreetly opened a large display case. Within four minutes of the first man's arrival, all had left the store. Only then did the employees notice the missing Millennium Necklace a one million piece made of platinum, black coral, and 2,000 diamonds. A classic distraction team operation. Detective Brian Mildebrandt described the thieves as a well-oiled machine. In May 2003, this gang targeted the Graf Jewelry Shop on New Bond Street in London. They walked into the shop looking elegant and chic. At first, the people working in the shop thought they were celebrities in disguise to avoid the paparazzi, but then, the robbers showed their guns and started taking the jewelry. The thieves took 47 jewelry pieces in the heist, making it the greatest diamond theft in British history at a staggering $33 million. The police later found a very expensive blue diamond ring worth 500,000 British pounds hidden in a face cream jar. This sneaky trick was like a scene from a famous movie called The Pink Panther, and that's how they got their name. After the robbery, the police caught two men, 
Nebosia Denic and Milan Jovetic. But even today, most of the stolen jewellery, around 80%, has never been found. Just a year later, in 2014, the Pink Panthers struck in Japan. At Le Super Diamant Couture de Maki Boutique in Tokyo, they took the Comtesse Le Vendôme necklace and jewels worth $23.7 million. That Comtesse Le Vendôme necklace was the shop's most prized possession and has been on display since the store opened in 1991. Not long after, they struck again in Tokyo's Ginza district, taking more jewels worth $2.4 million. In 2005, on the sunny beaches of Saint-Tropez, the Panthers, dressed in casual Hawaiian shirts and wigs, blended in with the crowd. But their casual appearance was only to deceive when they entered a high-end jewelry store. They swiftly took a collection of jewels and, interestingly enough, made their gateway via a speedboat, almost like a James Bond movie. That same year, they posed as workers at Amsterdam's Schiphol Airport and stole jewels valued at 75 million euros. Their trail of thefts continued in a very unusual country. On the 15th of April 2007, they attempted to pull off another heist in Dubai at the Graf store inside the Wafi City Mall. Driving in Audis, they crashed into the store, grabbed jewellery worth 2.4 million pounds and sped away. However, this time, their luck ran short. The stolen items were soon recovered, and two members were arrested. Even the Pink Panthers can be too confident sometimes. On October 6, 2007, Harry Winston Paris, a renowned jewellery boutique, was robbed of over $36 million in jewels. The heist was puzzling, as the thieves were already inside the store when it opened. Despite strict security protocols, the Paris store, located in the upscale Golden Triangle district, is known for its rare and expensive jewels. The robbery lasted less than 30 minutes and began when the security guard and an employee entered the store, unaware that four armed men were hiding inside. These men, disguised as utility workers, then forced them to open safes. They made their escape in a rented minivan, leaving no significant clues behind or any DNA for that matter. The stolen jewels have never been recovered. The only leads were the names Farid and Voldemort, overheard by the employees. Given the meticulous planning and execution, authorities immediately suspected the involvement of the Pink Panthers. The heist had elements reminiscent of scenes from classic heist films, adding to its mystique. But jewels weren't their only fixation. In Switzerland's largest art theft, they stole four paintings valued at $164 million from a Zurich museum in early February 2008. The artworks by renowned 19th century artists Cézanne, Degas, Van Gogh, and Monet were taken from the private bureau collection in broad daylight. The thieves, three men dressed in dark clothing and masks, entered the museum and swiftly made their escape in a white car. A reward of 100,000 Swiss francs has been announced for information leading to their arrest. In 2009, the gang revisited a familiar place, the Graf store on New Bond Street, and pulled off a heist that overshadowed their previous exploits. Their takeaway included 43 jewellery items, together valued at an impressive 40 million pounds. But they weren't done yet. On 28th of July 2013, they hit another big store. An armed robbery took place at the Carlton Intercontinental Hotel in Cannes, resulting in the theft of gemstones and watches valued at $136 million. Initial estimates had placed the value at $53 million, but this was later revised after considering another room in the hotel. The Panthers took nearly everything. The valuables were stolen from a private hotel salon that was poorly guarded. The items were on display by Israeli billionaire Lev Avnerovich Leviev. The thief, who wore a baseball cap and a scarf, was armed with a handgun. Despite a manhunt, no arrests were made. Milan Poparic, a member of the Pink Panthers crime gang, was suggested as a potential suspect. He was released from prison just days prior. This heist is considered one of the biggest in France and possibly in history. The robbery was the third in a series on the Riviera. Ten days after the heist, on behalf of Lloyds of London, a $1.3 million reward for information leading to the recovery of the stolen items was offered, as expected, to no avail. Five years later, in the historic Doge's Palace in Venice, the Pink Panthers made headlines once again. On the closing day of the Treasures of the Mughals and the Maharajas exhibition, they got away with jewels worth $2 million owned by the Qatari royal family after simply opening the display case. The glass case was opened up as if it were a tin can, while the alarm 
if it worked at all, went off late, police chef Vito Gagliardi said. The Panthers had most likely managed to tamper with the alarm. The TEFAF fair became the stage for a crime that grabbed headlines worldwide. Robbers, dressed sharply in suits and newsboy hats, took the room by storm. Out of nowhere, they started smashing display cases to grab the jewels. Funnily enough, they had a surprising escape strategy. They drove off on electric scooters. Among their loot was a necklace showcasing a dazzling 114 carat yellow diamond estimated at 27 million euros. Despite a hefty 500,000 euro reward for information, only one piece has been recovered. That striking yellow diamond, still missing till this day. As the upcoming TEAF event approaches with ramped up security, a question hangs in the air. Will the Pink Panthers make another bold move? Only time will tell. The Pink Panthers were on a roll for years, though they have also failed several times. There has been times when they started to become a bit sloppy and faced many challenges. In 2008, three members had to face trial in France. That same year, Dragan Mikic, one of their main guys, escaped from prison, but his freedom didn't last long. By 2009, he was caught again in Monte Carlo. Things got worse in 2012. The police found fingerprints at a crime scene. Those fingerprints belonged to Mitar Marjanovic, their leader, and he was arrested. Later that year in Athens, a regular police check turned into a big chase, ending with two members in handcuffs. Then, two members who had a hand in the Comtesse de Vendôme job in 2014 were arrested. In 2018, a job at the Paris Ritz went sideways when some of the gang got trapped. However, they still managed to steal items worth 4.5 million euros. The world is now keeping a closer eye on them. International police like Interpol are on their trail, and with the rise of new tech like computer tracking and better security systems, the Pink Panthers are finding it hard to move in the shadows. Things are heating up, and the big question is, can they adapt, or is this the end of their legendary heists? What do you think? Are they heroes who dare to do the impossible, or are they villains causing harm and stealing? What happens next is anyone's guess. We will have to see, and I will keep a close eye on it. If you have enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like and comment sharing your thoughts. See you in the next one.